The goal for this video is to provide you a quick overview of what big data is and what Hadoop is and all the buzz that is surrounded around uh, surrounding these two these two terms. At the end of it, you will learn what big data is comprised of, the three Ds of big data and why Hadoop is so popular in implementing the big data. Right now as I speak, Google gets around 2 million searches every minute and Facebook gets 34,000 likes every minute. That's a lot of data to deal with. Google deals with around two, uh, 20 petabytes of data each day and Facebook close to 3 or 4 petabytes every day and, uh, and uh, other user data as well. This data when properly stored and analyzed can provide a lot of insights which allows organizations to make profits or to come out of losses at least. For example, all the passenger information stored by airlines can be used to see what the passengers are liking when they travel from one place to another or one destination, one particular destination to another destination or what they are willing to buy on the aircraft, why the delays are happening, etc. Google can use the search information to see what the users are searching, keep that information beforehand, keep that search or do that search beforehand and when the user searches for it, they can show it right away. Insurance companies, banking, they can analyze all the customer information, their banking information, etc. to see what exactly the customers are looking for or what the customers are having issues with. So these huge petabytes of data or gigabytes of data is nothing but big data. The process of storing this huge data, analyzing this data to make some sense out of it for the betterment of our organization is called big data. Usually big data comes with three Vs, the popular three Vs, volume of data, velocity with which this data comes with, and the variety of data. Volume, as I have already said, it's huge. It deals with gigabytes and petabytes, terabytes and uh, petabytes of data. Variety, the data can come in any form. It could be text, it could be images, videos, etc. And these, the frameworks that support big data like Hadoop should be able to analyze any kind of data and derive some value out of it which will help the organizations. That's the variety part of it. And then the velocity, as I've already given you an example, the speed with, with which this data is generated. For example, the flight information, as the flight is traveling, it keeps sending, our, uh, sending the sensor information back to the closest air airport. Uh, of where exactly it is, the location of it. Similarly, the satellites keep sending the various images of the planet using which a lot of things can be derived. Hadoop, Apache Hadoop is an open source framework that allows us to implement big data. It is made up of several components, which entirely is open source. Hadoop can be defined as a distributed storage and data processing system. So it does two things, it stores the data and then it allows us to easily process this huge amounts of data in a distributed manner. So here is a high level Hadoop architecture and the components or the demons that Hadoop is made up of. These are the processes that run behind the scenes and do whatever Hadoop does. Key is HDFS which stands for Hadoop Distributed File System. As you can see, Hadoop follows like any other distributed technology, Hadoop follows the master-slave architecture and it has a distributed file system, HDFS, which is spread across machines. It could be any machine, you can easily add a new machine to the Hadoop cluster. It's very easy to do that, you will see that in the future presentations. So the data you give to Hadoop will be stored across these machines in the cluster, but there is one master and multiple slaves. So HDFS takes care of the data storage part and then map reduce is the other key component which deals with the data processing side of it. So there are two different things which are important components at the heart of Hadoop. These demons work, these three demons, name node, data node, secondary data node, secondary name node deal with HDFS or they allow, take, they take the data and then store, store them across HDFS. The last two, job tracker and task tracker, are responsible for running the map reduce jobs to process the data or to analyze the data and to derive what we need, the output that helps us to make some decisions as an organization. So map tracker, sorry, map reduce programs are usually written by default in Java, but Hadoop allows us to use even other languages through streaming. 
the big plus of Hadoop is instead of pulling the data to one single place and then analyzing the data, Hadoop sends the job Hadoop sends the map reduce jobs across these data nodes and then analyze the data analysis is done across these data nodes and the final result is returned back to the master. So the name node spreads the data across the data nodes and the job tracker is responsible for running the map reduce jobs. It will send the job across the task trackers which are located on the data nodes or the slave nodes. It's that simple but I will be dealing with some advanced concepts in the future presentations. But at a high level, these are the five important demons of Hadoop. The name node, data node, the secondary name node, as the name itself says, it is a backup for the name node. It's being deprecated. There are other ways to recover or to uh, have a backup for the name node. Job tracker is responsible for running the map reduce jobs. It's make, it makes use of the multiple task trackers that run on the different machines. To summarize, big data is nothing but huge amounts of data when carefully stored and processed can add a lot of value to any organization and to improve customer experience. Hadoop is an open source framework that uh, implements big data or that allows you to deal with big data. At a high level, Hadoop is made up of five demands or even before that, the two important architectural components of Hadoop are HDFS and MapReduce. HDFS stands for Hadoop Distributed File System which allows you to store data in a distributed manner. MapReduce can analyze this data. The, the, these are MapReduce programs are written by us in Java or any other programming language. There are even high level programming languages like Pig, Apache Pig, which is very easy to write and can be used to write MapReduce jobs. Name node takes care of the data and it is installed, usually name node is installed in the master master machine and then all the slaves will have a data node to which the name node will distribute the data. Similar fashion, job tracker will distribute the map reduce jobs across the slave machines through task trackers. Task trackers are responsible for running the process or analytics on the data and then return all the results to the job tracker. And Sending the process across instead of pulling the data into the name track, uh, main node, we are going to send the process, the map reduce job across the data nodes that differentiates Hadoop, that is the power of Hadoop. So instead of pulling all the data, Hadoop is very efficient in sending the tiny little map reduce process onto the data nodes and uh, getting the job done for us. In the future presentations of Hadoop, I'll show you the different modes in which Hadoop can be installed and run the distributions of Hadoop, internals of MapReduce, etc. Until then, take care.